All right, great. We're talking about the lymphatic system, and this is a series of tubes that exist in your body that you probably didn't even know you had. All right. A little bit of review. What I've drawn here is I've drawn a pretty simplified capillary bed. Okay. Now remember, these are the tiniest blood vessels that we have in our body, and they basically exist all over the place. They're in the tips of your fingers. They're all throughout your skin, throughout your muscles, toes, everywhere. All right. And this is the place in which all the good stuff in the blood, like the sugars and the oxygen and the nutrients, they leave the cardiovascular system, they leave the capillaries through tiny holes called fenestrations, and they bathe those tissues and all that good stuff. Okay, so if we remember, what is the magnitude of blood pressure at the start of the capillary bed? What is it? 35. 35, that's right. That's good. So you got 35 millimeters of mercury going out here. And it goes down by the end of the capillary bed. What is it there? 17. 17. You got it, Cam. That's good. Now, there's another pressure at play here, and that's pulling blood back into those tubes. That's called, you remember? Colloid osmotic pressure. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. So that colloid osmotic pressure, we're going to abbreviate that C-O-P. That's 25, right? And it's always going in, and it's due to the presence of proteins like albumin that pull fluid back into the capillary bed. So this is 25 going in here, and it's 25 going in there. So here you've got two pressures that are going in opposite directions. If you wanted to get the net pressure, you take the difference between these two. What's 35 minus 25? 35 minus 25. Wait, wait. 10. Nine. 10, yes. Which direction is it going? Out or in? Which one's bigger? It's going out because 35 is bigger. So here you have a net filtration pressure, NFP, equal to 10, and it's going out. Here, what's 25 minus 17? 8. 8, good. Here you got a net filtration pressure of 8 going in. And we talked about the fact that that's perfect because at the beginning of the capillary bed, it forces all that fluid out so it can interact with the tissues, bathe them in oxygen, glucose, and at the end of the capillary bed, it pulls it back in so that our blood volume doesn't go to zero. But what's the problem? What's that? They're not even. They're not even. So you've got more fluid going out and you've got fluid being picked back up. If we don't fix that somehow, what would it cause? Swelling. Swelling. Big time edema or swelling would cause our blood volume to go down to basically nothing and it would cause our tissues to swell. So we have a completely different set of tubes around all of our capillary beds that's responsible for picking up that leftover fluid. This is called our lymphatic system. It's a series of dead-ended tubes that look like this, that hang out right in between all the capillaries, and it picks up all that extra fluid. The ends of, and these are called uh, lymphatic capillaries. They pick up fluid like this, they have these little trap doors, they look like that, right? And these trap doors allow fluid, which is now called lymph. That leftover fluid that gets left behind is called lymph. L-Y-M-P-H. That lymph is going to enter into the ends of these lymphatic capillaries, and the trap doors don't let them go out. It goes in, can't go out. So as that fluid builds up, it's going to enter into these lymphatic capillaries because the pressure of fluid um, around the capillary beds increases. That causes them to enter these um, lymphatic capillaries, and the fluid then drains in this direction. It can't go the other direction because these lymphatic capillaries, like our veins, have one-way valves that prevent back. The smallest of these lymphatic vessels are called lymphatic capillaries. These guys are going to come together into larger little tubes called lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels are actually going to combine with one another and they're going to create these big like bulges, these big masses of tissues that kind of look like this. What are those called? Uh, Lymph. Nodes. Okay. 
So here, these tiny ones are the capillaries. The larger ones are the vessels. Vessels come together and they form lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are super important. What they contain is a bunch of reticular connective tissue. This reticular connective tissue is like this big web of proteins that allow cells to live on them, specifically white blood cells like lymphocytes and macrophages. What these guys do is they're gonna make sure that there's nothing in that lymph that shouldn't be there, like bacteria or viruses. And if there are, they're gonna either A, kill them, or they're gonna initiate an immune response that's gonna do a great job of taking care of that infection. And this is perfect because let's imagine you did have a cut right here in this capillary bed. You're gonna get inflammation. We'll talk about that in a different lecture. But that inflammation is gonna cause an excess of fluid to be collected in these lymphatic vessels. What's going to be in that fluid is a bunch of bacteria, which are going to go straight to the lymph nodes, and they're going to be intercepted by the things that we want to intercept them, such as white blood cells and macro or white blood cells like lymphocytes and macrophages. After the lymph nodes, we have larger vessels called lymphatic ducts. There's a duct. And these ducts are going to combine to form are the largest lymphatic vessels that we have which are called lymphatic trunks, T-R-U-A-K. The lymphatic trunks, do you, know, do you know where they empty into? Where do the lymphatic trunks empty into? They empty into the biggest veins in our body right before they interact or right before they dump into the heart. Specifically, they dump into um, the start of our brachiocephalic veins, right where our um, jugular vein meets with our subclavian vein, and it dumps right in there. Uh, our lymphatic trunks, they're the biggest lymphatic vessels, but they're still quite small compared to our veins. I mean, you're looking at the size of these lymphatic trunks being like one to two millimeters, very, very quite small in comparison to the veins, which could be like a centimeter in diameter. All right. Now, there's other places where we'll have lymphatic tissue. And collectively, these are called the mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue, malt organs. Um, one place you'll find these is the spleen. You know where the spleen is? Close. Your spleen's right here, all right? Your spleen's right here on the side of your abdomen. But this brings up a good point. You put it in your neck. That's where you'll find a high density of these lymph nodes. You'll find your lymph nodes in your neck. Right? The lymph nodes in your neck, that's draining all the lymph that comes down from your head. Where else are you going to find lymph nodes? Your spleen. Close, close. Your axillary region, your armpits. What? The lymph nodes in your armpits, where are they draining the lymph from? Your arm, right? Then you're going to have lymph nodes right here in your groin. That's draining the lymph from your legs. So if you have a bad infection on your leg, you'll probably notice that the lymph nodes in your groin get swollen. What happens right here to your neck when you're really sick? Does it hurt right there? Is it like all, you know, like hard? That's because the lymph nodes in your neck are dealing with a bunch of infection that's being drained through the lymph of your, of your head, right? Back to the spleen. The spleen's an oval-shaped organ that is located in your abdomen, kind of on the left side, left side of your abdominal wall. It is fed by a very large splenic artery which divides up. The spleen has two main roles. The first role uh, consists of macrophages that are gonna clean up old red blood cells. They're gonna clean up and recycle old red blood cells that really should, aren't really doing their thing anymore. They might be kind of falling apart, getting rigid because they're a couple months old. These macrophages are gonna be doing that job in regions of the spleen that are called red pulp. And they have a kind of a reddish color. It's going to do this, and then you're going to have a large splenic vein that leaves the spleen. Looks kind of like this. Right. These white regions next to the red pulp, that's called white pulp. And those are basically just like these lymph nodes. It's a high concentration of lymphocytes. And they're going to clean up the blood from um, you know, bacteria and things, viruses that shouldn't be there. We also have mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue in, our, in the back of our throat. What are those? tonsils, right? You got your tonsils, you got your pharyngeal tonsils, those are the big ones in the back of your throat. You've got your um, lingual tonsils, those are the big bumps on the back of your tongue. 
You got your tubal tonsils, which are at the base of your auditory tube that connects your pharynx to your um, middle ear. And then you've got um, your adenoids, which are tonsils kind of up in your nasopharynx. The roles of these guys is that they're intended to intercept bacteria and viruses that enter into your respiratory tract before they have a chance of invading your, your body. Where's your appendix? Um, like your head? No. no, it's right here. It's in your abdomen. It's a little dead-ended tube that hangs off the side of your cecum, which is the first part of your large intestine. This is also packed full of lymphocytes. The goal of these guys is to intercept bacteria that shouldn't be in your gut. When they get overwhelmed, it causes appendicitis, and that could be life-threatening because of your appendix ruptures, all the nasty stuff in your gut gets into your body, and that's bad news, okay? And that's basically the lymphatic system, all right?